All right, hello, fun, and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the KK's Airplane Autopilot mod, which is being made by form user Cartafel Kuchin. And what this glorious little piece of work looks at into the game is, well, an autopilot for your airplanes. And I love this mod. As you all know, I'm not the greatest pilot ever when it does come to planes. And so this is a tremendously useful tool for me. And even if you are a competent pilot, it has a number of functions to really help you out with some of the more mundane tasks of flying. So let's uh, jump on over to a plane I've got on the runway and have a look at how this all does work. And the first thing I need to mention is a prerequisite requisite mod you are going to need the Kerbal operating system to make this function and for any of you who don't know what the Kerbal operating system is basically it's a mod that adds in a little computer terminal in game that you can control all of the functions of your ship through command prompts or command lines rather and it is a tremendously useful and powerful tool but quite complicated as everything is coded in. And this mod aims to basically add in a more user-friendly interface to use the KOS system as an autopilot, which is wonderful. So to get to the autopilot to work, you are going to have to attach to any ship you want to control with a control system added in from the Kerbal Operating System mod. Now there are a number of different ones you can add on, just with different aesthetic choices. I went with the Cal 9000 because that's wonderful. And then you simply have to hit the open terminal button here to bring up the Kerbal Operating System. System UI or alternatively you could go to the KOS button here and click the terminal button it will do the same thing but with this uh, terminal online we have to start by typing in a basic command in fact two commands to get this mod to function so first is a uh, switch to a zero and then a uh, oh, no not ton run auto to 60 and with that it will start running some things in the background there and open up the autopilot and I love it so now instead of having to type in all of these commands to get it to do things we just have to you know send the commands to it through a user interface and that's wonderful so let's pop that over here and talk about what all we do have here in the autopilot now, the first four options are some individual functions the autopilot can help you with. And this is one of those things that even if you are an experienced pilot, will be handy. So for instance, you can have the autopilot force your plane to go a certain speed, altitude, heading, or pitch. And you can turn it on or off by, you know, just typing in whatever you want here and then clicking the button. And it will start passing all those commands to the Kerbal Operating System to make your plane go that speed. And you can mix and match these however you want by just having speed and altitude on or just do the heading and speed or whatever you desire. Now the bottom four are much more complicated commands that are basically going to run a series of different speed, altitude, heading, and pitch updates to do an autopilot function. And the first one here is takeoff. If we click this, it will take this plane off at a specific speed, heading, etc., to get it to a place where then we can take over control. Now, after that is the landing command, where if we go to this drop down, we can select one of the runways in the world and then hit the land button, and the plane will land at that place. We then have the navigate button where we can go to either the island or desert airfields and it will navigate our plane to that location and then attempt to land. And again, you just turn that on by hitting the nav button there. And then the final one is to fly our plane to one of a number of different waypoints 
on the planet. So we can head uh, south uh, to the mountains, southeastern, uh, the pass over there, go to the desert airfield, go to the North Pole up there. I believe the South Pole's on there too somewhere. Oh no, actually South Pole isn't on there unless I'm blind. But yes, we can go to any of these places and it will just change the heading of our airplane to go towards that locale. And then you can, of course, from there, land or do whatever you want. And these buttons are used just like up here. You click the button and it does the things. Now, so let's start off by just doing a takeoff maneuver. I'm gonna have put my hands off of my keyboard just on my mouse and hit take off. Now I'm gonna have to turn the brake off because it does not control that when taking off. And it knows we are on this runway, so it will begin to take off at these specified headings, speed, etc., for us to use, and it's controlling it. Now you'll see it's a little bit bouncy and occasionally it will wobble side to side. Now it eventually does even itself out, and once we get to a safe distance away from our takeoff there, it will turn off the autopilot and hand control back over to us. And once it does, we'll talk about how these settings are sort of set here. Oh, there we go. We now have control back. And let's real quick actually keep it at 150 for our speed and also have it hold altitude at 1150. Hit that, there we go. It's gonna start climbing back up to those while I talk. Now, when we did the takeoff, it changed all of these values up here to certain predetermined defaults. And those are set in this settings button here. As you can see, we have the height, the minimum, maximum speed, takeoff speed, takeoff angle, and a number of other options here. And this is what it's going to use when trying to take off land or navigate to a specific point and you can change these defaults in the script file or just manually adjust them in here as you can just click into any of these and type whatever it is that you want which is a very handy for me though I've left all of these as the default and it's worked just fine now, if we do say want to head over there to the island base, we can go do the navigate and uh, yeah, head to the island airfield, hit the nav button there, and it freaked out a little bit, which happens on occasion, but it's now getting back into things and starting to navigate us there. And you can see we get this route info where it shows us where we're going from and to, which if we turn this on sooner, from leaving the Kerbal Space Center, it wouldn't be doing so much wobbling. It's kind of trying to uh, counteract things because its route info started at the Kerbal Space Center and is heading towards the island. And since we were kind of far away from the Kerbal Space Center, it freaks out a little bit, but it does show us here our distance as well and our flight time. So all again, very useful, handy things. And if we do turn that off by just clicking uh, those off there, and say if we instead want to head to the Woomerang launch site, hit the waypoint there, now it's going to start changing the heading, but we still actually have to control our throttle and altitude and whatnot, unless, of course, we do set those up here. So yes, landing, navigation, and takeoff will sort of do everything. The waypoint one really only does the heading, and so you're gonna have to manually change, uh, either control yourself or manually update the speed and altitude here for it to be a bit better. But yeah, all in all, it's pretty great. Now, the one issue I have had recently is with uh, landing. It seems to, on occasion, not work. Like, since we are over here by the island airfield, we'll try and land here at this runway, uh, but sometimes it doesn't slow down enough. Now, I've had this problem most often here on the island runway. Back at the Kerbal Space Center, I've never had an issue landing with this autopilot over there, and same with the desert airfield. I haven't had issues there either. But this runway here, for some reason, it comes in too fast and will bounce sometimes. But thankfully, the autopilot realizes that and will begin to freak out and actually take us back off into the air 
to abort the landing, which is actually a very cool safety feature. I do very much like that. But you can see here the landing info panel. We have the runway we're going to, our heading, distance, ETA, our altitude error, heading error, and I'm our velocity down there. And you can see all the stuff going on over here in the Kerbal operating system, how it's passing along all that stuff. Let's see how this landing goes. Oh, it aborted the landing. We weren't able to do it. So even before the bounce, it decided it wasn't gonna work out. So yeah, for some reason, this island is what seems to give it all the issues. If we did head back to the Kerbal Space Center though, like I said, I've had no issues there or the desert airfield. But all in all, this autopilot system is amazing and even with the island airfield with it lining you up perfectly then you could take over manual control if you so desire and then bring it in for the final few maneuvers which even me i could possibly do i'm awful at the lining up and getting the right altitude but uh yeah once we got near the runway i could probably slow it down and hit the brake button that could probably go well but overall, it's just such a useful, handy tool. And I mean, come on, who doesn't love a good autopilot? So yes, if you would like to take a look at this mod for yourself, which I'd certainly recommend you go and do, uh, you can have a look at the link in the description as per usual. But uh, yeah, that is really all there is to talk about this mod. It's a wonderful, handy tool. And I definitely recommend you go and have a look. So if you have enjoyed this today, which I hope you have, uh, I hope you do come back for the next episode. But until that time, thank you for watching. And as always, have a good one.